Welcome back to the channel and this is part two of making a naval cannon in Blender 4.3. If you haven't already seen part one where we did the modeling, go ahead and check that out. But this is the second part where we'll do these materials and really kind of bring our 3D model to life. So let's jump in. And as always, I will be uploading the final blend file to my Patreon. You can check that out in the description as well if you want, or you can just continue watching the tutorial. Now that we're in part two, we're gonna go ahead and create a little stage with some lighting. So we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna to go to our mesh options, add in a plane. And let's just go S and scale this plane up nice and big and then click. And then let's go S and I guess, since we're looking at it front on like this, I guess we're gonna go S, X and scale it along the X. So S, X, give it a bit of um, X width. We're gonna tab into edit mode and let's select the edge, select the option and select the back edge. And then in our right of graphic view, we'll just go E and let's just extrude a few times. I'm just pressing E and just making kind of like a simple backdrop. And I'm gonna right click in object mode and go shade smooth. And then in our front view, we're just gonna go shift A, we'll add in a camera. Let's move this camera up and in our right orthographic view, we'll move it back. And then in our camera view, by pressing zero on the numpad, you can kind of see this is what we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just position my camera like this. Now you can obviously um, put your camera however you want, okay? So how you wanna pose your model is completely your business, but I'm gonna go something like this. And I might just scale this a little bit more in the X, there we go. And another thing you could do, if you didn't wanna scale your background too much, you could always just select your camera and go to your camera settings give it a higher focal length and then it's kind of more, has this kind of like very narrow kind of view um, and you get less of the background. But whatever you choose, just set up yourself a camera and then go over to your render settings and change it from EV to cycles. And then go over to your render options down here and let's take the max samples to 45 and make sure denoising is enabled down here, which it should be by default. I'm gonna come over here and change my transform pivot back to median point. And then I'll select my um, backdrop here, the plane we added in and holding and shift select your camera. And then press M, create a new collection and call it stage. And then go create. And the reason we're doing this is that our main collection up here, which we'll double click on, that is our cannon. This is anything to do with our cannon over here. So if we turn this off, our cannon disappears. And with our stage here, if we turn the little eye off here, you can see that our stage disappears. So now we have a way of adding things in an organized way. So we're gonna make sure that the stage is active. We're gonna go Shift A and add in a light, and let's make it an area light. We're gonna move it up, and with our 3D cursor here in the middle, I guess we'll change our transform pivot back to 3D cursor. Let's just go to our light properties down here. Let's give a strength of 130 and the size of two meters. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna just go R and rotate it, to have it kind of coming from the back at a 45. And if we go to a camera view, we can go Z and then go rendered. And with this light, I might bump the strength up to 200. There we go. Or maybe even, let's go 300, there we go. And then I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna go R, Z and rotate it and have one kind of coming from the back. So you can see what we're doing here, we're creating some nice rim lighting from the back. And I'm gonna go Shift D, R, and Z and duplicate and rotate another one coming kind of from here. So this is all more kind of backlit at the moment, which is what I'm trying to achieve. And then you can select one of these and go Shift D to duplicate, double tap R, and kind of have it kind of in more from the front, like so. And then let's take this one to, down to 120, or maybe, yeah, 120 should be fine. And then Shift D to duplicate and rotate it and have one kind of coming over from the side here, kind of almost the front like that. And that one will make 80 with the strength. Yeah, now we have some nice lighting. Make sure to save, we have a stage and all of our lights and everything should all be in there. So if we turn off the stage, we see it all goes away. So let's turn it back on. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to the internet. In fact, for you, it's a lot simpler because you can just go into the description of this video and I'm gonna put two links in there. One is to this rusty metal material and the other one is to this wooden planks. So this is all you have to do, it's completely free. It's with the first one, the rusty one, you can just come here 
make sure it's set to 2K and it has a little Blender logo here, which it should by default. Then click on download. It's gonna download a zip file. Then with the other wooden planks one, do the exact same thing. All you have to do is here is click on download. So it downloads the 2K Blender file here. And then in your downloads, what you're gonna see is these two. So it's gonna be a zip file for worn planks and coarse rust. And so you're just gonna go ahead and right click and go extract and extract these zip files, just like you would with any other zip file on your computer. I go ahead and I'm gonna extract this one here. So I have them both extracted in my downloads and you can see here that inside we have some textures and a blend file in both of them, okay? Now we don't have to do anything manually, we'll just import it into Blender directly. So we're gonna go into our scene, then we're gonna go to file and we're gonna to go to append. In my case, that's in my downloads and over here I'm gonna to go to the coarse rusty material here, double click on it and then click on the blend file click on materials and then double click on coarse rust and now it's imported that material. So all I have to do now is click on my Canon, the actual main Canon barrel. I'm gonna go over to my materials and now I'm gonna to come to the drop down and I should see this coarse rust material. I'm gonna click on it. And now if I go Z and go rendered, it should look like a mess because this is meant to be using UV coordinates, okay? So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna go into our shading workspace. In our camera view, you can go Z and then go render it if you want. And what we're gonna do is we'll actually come here to our coordinate mapping and we'll just drag this from the object and plug that into the vector. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to each one of these textures and change it from flat to box projection. So each one of these, just change them to box. The same with the normal over here and then also the displacement. Just change them all to box. There we go. And what we wanna do is we wanna come here to the base color and we go shift A, search and type in ramp. Get a color ramp and then just put a color ramp between the base color and the principled color input. And now we can drag this white value down and make it a little bit darker like so. And then drag this one up. And now we have kind of like the barrel looking like this. I want it to be a little bit more reflective and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate this color ramp and then place it on the roughness cable. So you can see here it says roughness. It's going into the roughness here. And what I'll do is I'll just grab this value up here and I'll make it a bit lighter, just a little bit lighter. So we have some roughness on our cannon, but not too much. And you can see that this material here is looking really, really good. And we're gonna reuse this, so what we'll do is we'll come over here and select all of these nodes. We'll right click and go copy. Then we'll click on this metal strap that runs over the wood here. We'll come to our materials tab and go new. And let's just come here and call it um, metal straps. And then let's come here to this two nodes over here. Let's select them and press delete. Let's right click and go paste and paste in um, these nodes. And now all we have to do it's just come here and get this color ramp and just press X to delete it and then plug the color back into the base color. And now we have this rusty metal material back. I might also just get rid of this color ramp over here and just plug it in to the roughness directly. Okay, so now we have the rusty metal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these bolts that we've added we can go ahead to our drop down, give them that same metal straps material. Then grab these two metal side plates and give them the same metal straps. And now if we go Z, let's just go into rendered view. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's cool. But the mapping is a little bit off here. So what we could do is maybe come in here to the metal straps and just make it generated instead. And I think that's working a lot better in this instance, okay? So that's cool, now we have that done. We'll get to the wheels in a bit, but first we need to go ahead and make sure to save. Then let's go file and let's go um, append. And now let's go back to our downloads or wherever you have those zip folders extracted. And now we're gonna click on the war pl worn planks, click on the blend file inside and then go to the materials, double click on the material planks and now it's imported. Now click on the actual body here, come to the drop down here and just go to the worn planks. And we wanna come here as well and just change all of this mapping to box projection. 
Okay, so I'm going to come down to each one of these maps and just change them to box projection. And I'll come here and change this to object at the UV input. So texture coordinate object going into the mapping vector. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, okay, that's looking awful. So let's maybe just try the generated input into the vector. Again, that seems to be working. It's just, it's going the wrong direction. So what we can do here, if that's the case, let's just come to your rotation here. And maybe let's just try 90 degrees on the Y, which has worked in this case, and that's looking really good. But it's not quite working here at the front. So what I might do is just go ahead and click here on the plus, come to the drop down and get that wooden planks material again, the worn planks. Then I'm gonna click on this little number here to make it its own material. And let's just call it wooden planks underscore front. And once again, you only have to do this if you don't have it lining up correctly. But now I'm gonna tab into edit mode and let's just select a vertex on each one of these front beams and go control L to select the whole thing. And then let's just assign that front material. So it's its own material now. And now if we go Z and go rendered, we can come here and let's just change the mapping on the Y. So we'll maybe make that zero on here and maybe on the X, we'll try and make it 90. In this case, that's rotated it the right way, which is really good. Okay, now we have that all sorted out. Um, let's tap back out. Let's select our wheels now and let's come to the drop down and give it that um, worn planks, the first one. Let's go Z, let's go render it again. And in this case, it's having some stretching happening here. So what we'll do, we'll just click on this little number. So it says worn planks here. But we'll just click on this number here, make it its own material. Let's just call this wheels. And then now that it's its own material, we'll just come here to the mapping and change it the 90 to maybe zero degrees. And now that lines up, but the scale, um, we can maybe come here to the scale and change each one of these to 0.5 maybe. Or maybe let's try 0.7. Yeah, and 0.7 works well there. So yeah, now we have that done. What we can also do with our wheels is come here to the um, materials, click plus, come to the drop down, and then add that metal straps material. Tab into edit mode and then select the vertex on the metal band and also one for the hub and then go control L and then just assign that metal straps material. Tab back out and now if you go Z and go rendered, you can see now it's applied there. Pretty cool. So I'm happy with that, but I think that metal is maybe just a bit too rusty for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click on that metal strapping. I'm gonna come to the metal straps material and between the base color here and the principal, I'm gonna go shift a search and get a ramp, grab a color ramp, place it on here. And I might just drag this value up here the black value, but I'm gonna make it a bit lighter in value and make it kind of slightly brownish, like that. Maybe even a little bit lighter in value. There we go. And I think I'll go shift a search and get another ramp, place it on the roughness, and then slightly drag that black value up, just to add a bit more reflectivity to that metal strapping, and then bring this guy down and make the value just a little bit darker. And now you can see we have some more reflectivity in that metal strapping. And that's looking a lot better. Okay, so now let's just select our actual floor, the plane in the background. Let's go new and kill that floor. And now you can change it to whatever color you want. So you can make it blue, orange, red, pink, whatever. But I'm gonna go with just kind of like a white and then just drag that value way down. And in which case, I'll also come here to the specular and just bring that um, IOR level down. So we get less of that specular reflection. And then you can just grab your lights and you can shift D to duplicate and rotate and kind of place them wherever you feel you need some more lights in the scene. So maybe one more from the front. Okay, that's looking really good. So now let's go ahead, make sure to save. Let's go to our layout. And let's just go render and then do a test render by clicking on render image. And there we have it, looking pretty good. So um, yeah, this is our Canon. What we'll do in the third and final part 
is we'll maybe just model a few cannonballs, put them here in the scene. We'll do a render and then we'll do a little bit of compositing just to really kind of bring the shot together and make it look really nice. And uh, yeah, that'll be in part three. Don't forget that I am putting this final blend file on my Patreon. So if those of you supporting the channel on Patreon, um, you'll be getting access to that and you can check that out in the description if you're curious. I'll see you in part three.